We got the route changed through Salem, and that was a big one for us. You yeah. know, so yeah, everything will kind of come off of that one for sure. What relationship, coming from East Oregon, I need to know how to get our group back. What relationship do you have with Amtrak? Well, I don't think we have any relationship with Amtrak right now, and that's going to be something that we're going to have to work on. And I know exactly this person to call for that. Oh, great. Let's say Rose, Rose Blackson from Amtrak is very, very. Uh, Supportive of cycling. And Joanne mentioned something to me this morning is that with our route, you can go from Salem to Eugene and back again. That's a conceivable uh, route to take. And you can also go from Salem up to Shampooig and back again for a two day trip. So you don't really need to shuttle any cars around. Um, so that's an option as well. So there's a lot of different options with the Willamette Valley bikeway that people need to yeah, investigate. There are some trains you can put your bike in. The, the, cas the Cascade train, but you have to let them know ahead of time, but you can put your whole bike right on the rack. You know, the it's only, there's only five slots on the train. There's five? Yeah, that's five why you, you want to make sure you yeah. let them know. Working with Amtrak, I think, is, thank you for mentioning that. That's a really great thing. I'm going to move on here. Okay. okay. Great. Um, but when, uh, you said this before, but don't forget about the event section on the Ride Ridden Ride site. You guys just mentioned your ride. I know that various folks in this room want to do different rides. Jay's doing the, the Grand Tour ride, even though he's the, Mount, the Blue Mountain Century. So please use the events page on the Ride Ride and Ride to post all this great, especially the, the, the Lamp Dallas Bike Ride. So we can all know that. And Mark, are you ready to say a thing or two about what's being done in the back of the room here? Hi, everyone. I'm Mark. I've prepared your lunch today, and we have a little bit of something for any kind of a diet. Everything has been made from scratch, and we have a sausage lasagna with um, with homemade pasta and fresh tomato sauce. We have spanakopita, the spinach and feta cheese. We have a selection of wraps with barbecue pork, roasted chicken, and some vegetarian with avocado. We've got hummus with fresh cut vegetables and olives. And we've got Lebanese baklava and a green salad with a fresh homemade uh, vinaigrette dressing. What are, what's everybody else eating? <laughs> <laughs> then, then we have um, vouchers for McDonald's. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Well, I'll avoid talking about the sheriff. So what I think I'll do is okay, let's go on to the We've already we've covered the nine designated, and now we're on to the ones that will be voted on on May 8th by the Parks Commission. So we can have Falls Valley, and then once we go to Falls Valley, we'll, we'll take the break and get our lunches and then work through lunch. So Falls Valley, by the way. Bruce and Jim, would you like to join me? No, no, no. We'd like to join Come on. <laughs> Yes, well, I'm, and we're just following the lunch announcement, too. <laughs> More difficult. So I guess the main success is that we're on deck. We're recommended, and it's taken a while to get to this point, but you know we're anxious for May 8th. We're ready to go. Uh, it's, it's taken a, a, a number of years. This is not an overnight project for us by any means. Uh, Bruce Buffington with the Northwest Bicycle Safety Council and Jim Huff are on the uh, Washington County Visitors Association Scenic Bikeway Committee. This committee was formed after Bruce basically had, had the idea um, to create a scenic bikeway based on a very popular uh, ride route that, that was already existing, which is the Beaverton Banks and beyond. So um, our organization went ahead and said, yes, cycling tourism is extremely important. And the one really obvious thing uh, about that was that we had created a bike map a number of years ago. 
we ran out. People kept calling, kept wanting a bike map, and we're like, okay, let's get another bike map out. Within two months, we, we distributed 10,000 copies of our bike map. It was that popular. So you can't ignore that kind of consumer demand for that product. So um, that's, that's the exciting part. Uh, I also feel that um, it's really, it's been uh, kind of inspiring to see people come together um, and, and different counties and, and different cities and just really support this effort. Um, we had public meetings that were, you know, people showed up and they were, they might have had some critiques, but they were so thoughtful, you know, and, and they, we got great feedback during, you know, our Twalton Valley Scenic Bikeway workshop and the uh, open houses that we had, and that was, that was really important for us too, but uh, yes, what would you like to? Well, you know, the whole idea really started with people in this room with Kristen and Alex at a meeting I attended where I won this hat for Ride Oregon Ride <laughs> many years ago. And we had already had a route set up as a fundraiser through the Tualatin Hills Park and Rec District in Washington County uh, to have a fundraising ride. They asked uh, us for some ideas about a long distance ride. We already had one on the books that we were working on. So we introduced it through Hike and Bike. Well, Alex said, you know, I like your route, I like your map, you should probably make this one of the proposals for the scenic bikeway. But you may want to get some of the support of the people in the cities and the surrounding areas. Well, the first person I contacted, since I didn't know really where to go, was Jim Huff, was the city manager of banks. And I thought, well, the ride starts in Beaverton. I know I would have no problem there, but I went to the uh, city of banks and Jim and I talked about it, he loved the idea, and he said, well, you know who you should have involved in this, because they have their finger on the pulse of Washington County, is the Washington County Visitors Association. There is where it all started with the WCVA taking over the lead, getting all the, we have 11 cities in Washington County, they're all small uh, cities. We have a lot more communities, and we also have a lot of businesses there that all enjoy different things in the great outdoors, and one of them, cycling, has always been there, so we thought this was a win-win for everyone. Jim and I were talking this morning that part of our program is really based on that people who bike or enjoy the outdoors, they uh, have exposable time and exposable income. Disposable. Or disposable income. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exposable. <laughs> exposable, yeah. <laughs> We're going to take your money. Yeah. <laughs> but one of the conversations that we had all along, which made, made it perfect for WCVA, is that just because someone rides a bike in your area and they leave, it's not over. They come back. In my county, I, I play golf. I like the theater, I like to eat in restaurants, I like to eat in little small diners, and that brings people back to those things, and people realize that, and I think Jim coined it right when he said it's part of the local economic development process. It is, it is. it's true. We have, uh, we, we're a tiny town, if we're competing for small towns, the banks is uh, extremely small. Uh, uh, but uh, it's, it is economic development. Uh, if you want the best, listen to this, if you want the best hamburger in Washington County, come to Banks because it is phenomenal and it's in a bar. You can't beat that. <laughs> well, I challenged him on that and I have to agree because I had one, so. Well, and, and, and so what, you, what, we, what we wanted to do was build on, on a whole lot of assets. Uh, uh, in, in Banks, it's the end of the Banks Renonia State Trail, and that uh, trail is the first rail trail in Oregon. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to add on to, add to, uh, to that, that particular asset. Um, and then we found the, the WCBA is, has the finger on the pole, a pulse uh, uh, of, the, of all of Washington County and all of the assets. So it's a matter of just gathering all those things together and putting them put it together for the enjoyment of the uh, of the riding public and having an expert bicyclist mm -hmm. is, that is also yeah. very critical. Key. Lunch. Lunch. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, I, and I guess um, some of the challenges, uh, toilets, you know, there's some spaces that there are no facilities and, and, and where do we go from there? And some, you know, some are no brainers, they're p parks, it's public, but some people are like, I, I live on the route, they could use my bathroom if they really had to, you know, <laughs> what are you gonna do, put somebody's home address, <laughs> use that toilet, they'll say yes. Um, so that, that was, and I personally found, um, a little challenging with the, I mean, the media was both great and kind of a little bit stressful because reporters always seem to want this angle of, well, where are you going to get the money? What is this? What's the money, money, money? And so that was, you know, that's the kind of the delicate way to kind of work with media. But we did get a, a ton of, of media and we're not even designated yet. So anyway, that was just a personal challenge I kind of wanted to bring up. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up because I, yes, I, everyone who talks to me, you get some weird question that you're really wishing that they weren't asking you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Allison, thank you very much. Allison is the one who's really taken hold and run, and has really uh, uh, pulled this whole thing together with her expertise and her enthusiasm. Really appreciate being able to do that. And our big leader is there in the back. The president yeah. <laughs> of WCVA is uh, Carolyn McCormick. Uh, they've been very supportive. They are all about action. There hasn't been a time that there was any kind of pushback on any part of the project. Questions were answered. People were satisfied with the answers. Answers and with our last workshop. Everyone said, no one said they were ever against it. They just wanted to know, how are you gonna handle this? And then if they were satisfied with that, it ended there. And we had the spirit of cooperation throughout the county. I think that's very rare when you have all those different levels of government. But I also think it's very commendable that the state put together such a solid foundation for such a great outdoor activity, so. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So that bikeway will be well from recommended to hopefully designated when the State Parks Commission votes on it on May 8th. So let's take the break for get your food, um, whatever else, and in about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, we'll come back together and keep going on our list. 15 minutes. Can we do it 15? <laughs>
The next day. Um, should I go to that or should I go to the legislative? Are you going to cover hmm. anything that would be beyond what I've already been exposed to? Yeah, you should go to the legislative one. But I'm supporting you. There are too many things going on. Act video conference. Okay. This is Maura Schwartz, and uh, we started this process a couple years ago, in part because I thought of the economic development opportunity. We start in Madras and we go through a couple of other small communities, Metolius, which is about 700 people, and then on to Culver, which is a little over 1,000. And then the route swings up towards the Co-Palisade State Park. If you've ever been to that park, it's one of the more popular parks in, in the state. Uh, there's a road that goes along the rim, and it has fantastic views from Mount Adams down through Jefferson, the Three Sisters, Mount Bachelor. So it's a gorgeous ride, and I thought we should share that with everybody. And it brings some economic development and some dollars to the restaurants. Maybe they'll stay in the hotels. Maybe people passing by as they go from Portland to Bend will stop and ride our route. But there's a second reason I wanted to do this. Unlike Grant County, Jefferson County is the unhealthiest county in the state. <laughs> so we're hoping to have a little publicity in town and motivate people. We have nice bike trails. Uh, besides the one we're proposing, the scenic bikeway, we're hoping that more people will just use these things. We have a beautiful pool. We do a, a, a triathlon in the fall. And we're just hoping that besides tourists coming in and spending money, some of the locals will go out and ride this route and get a little bit healthier. 
So that's part of motivation. Um, some of the ben well, we haven't seen a lot of benefits yet. We've got some publicity. We've had some good articles in the Ben Bulletin, the local paper. Um, I can think of one of the challenges besides trying to pull everybody together and getting all these letters of support and a lot of the work that goes into the management plan is finding out who is going to be the obstructionist. And so we have one person in our account we called Mr. No. And <laughs> we decided we're not going to talk to him. So we went to the county commissioners first. We went to each of the communities, talked to the chambers and uh, the city councils, and we got all the support we needed from them. And then went to the county commissioners and got the support of all the commissioners. And then the commissioners, who happened to be the boss of Mr. No, just told him this is what he's going to do. So it made it a lot easier. That's one of the challenges. Um, I'd say another challenge is probably uh, one intersection that's going to be a little bit difficult. Um, people can drive a little bit fast through there. And so we're going to ask ODOT to sign it and put up some caution signs. But I think ODOT in our region is pretty supportive, and that's going to work out pretty well. Um, oh, I wanted to mention one other thing about signs. We are down in Wairika in California, and they're really trying to promote cycling too. They've got their Chamber of Commerce materials, and they have um, bicycle-friendly community stickers on some of the businesses. And they have these signs that say, share the road, you know, with the car on one side and the cyclists on the other. Well, some went through there and for, like put these big, black marks over the cyclist. So when you're out there riding your routes after the, the signs, signs go up, uh, you might, well, we're not California, so maybe that's not going to happen, but <laughs> something to look out for. So there are a couple other advantages. Um, we ride outside all year long in Jefferson County. We don't get that much cinder on the streets, and most days are at least 50 degrees. So we have year-round riding that we can do with our scenic bikeway. Um, we've had great city support and one of the things we've talked to a lot of the, because of three small jurisdictions, um, there are existing events that bring in people but they may not know, Jefferson County is the best road cycling you've never done. Um, country roads, great conditions, gorgeous scenery, very few cars and so when these other events are happening they're going to actually link it to the eventual site and Ride Oregon Ride and the maps when everything's designated so that people coming to these other events will then be able to go out for a bike ride on the scenic bikeway and take more advantage of the great cycling that's there. Um, and then there's two other big challenges that we face. The first is we do not have a bike shop in Madras, Culver, or Metolius. Uh, the closest one is 25 miles away in Redmond. Um, there are a lot of mechanics around but it, you know stands one he's not just going to fix everybody's bike but we turn that into an opportunity and our chamber director and the chambers the lead proponent has been phenomenal and we've got a motorcycle repair shop a physical therapist and a B&B &B owner who now will have pumps and some spare tubes so we just have to make that known um, and the PT is trying to promote cycling as part of the recovery for a lot of his patients so he will do anything to help us make this scenic bikeway happen, which is awesome. And then the last drawback we have is Madras is the only county seat in Central Oregon without a brew pub. <laughs> yeah, we have the hop farm. Yeah. And we do have a hop farm, actually. So do you have anything else? Oh, the other thing, if you have great ideas on how to promote this in a brochure, or put the maps on websites. That's kind of where we're going now. We're trying to connect Crook County and some of their mapping and their bike routes with ours and the scenic bikeway. Um, so that's where we're heading now is, it, is to try to promote not just the scenic bikeway but other loops within the, within the counties. Good job. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for May 8th. <clears throat> May 8th will be the day. And now we're up to um, Two rivers, and we are a little off schedule here, so if you can keep an eye on our time. Bill, did you want to? So the Two Rivers pedal is a uh, ride between Estacada, which is uh, on the uh, northwest 
uh, side of it, and Detroit, Oregon, which is on the southeast side of it. And this is a route through the Mount Hood and uh, Willamette National Forest. It's uh, very uh, pristine and uh, isolated kind of area, wilderness area, uh, not a lot of cell phone coverage, that kind of thing. There is uh, a number of campsites, so you have pretty good uh, bathroom and water facilities all along the, the roof. And on the Estacada end, it's... So can uh, you speak up a little bit? <clears throat> I can't hear you in the on the Estacada end, it's uh, relatively gentle. Um, as you uh, progress further east, it's a little more rugged and a little more elevation. Um, it's basically a forested area. There's some nice scenic views, and you're uh, along the rivers almost all the route. Uh, so in planning for this, some of the things we're looking at is uh, not only having a supported ride between the two cities where perhaps people start out in Estacada, they go to uh, Detroit. Detroit has a number of cabins as well as campsites and so forth, so it might be a good place for an overnight stay. And then the second leg, uh, come back into Estacada again. Um, so anyway, in our planning, what we've kind of looked at is why do people go into the National Forest now and how can we link that with cycling? And so like this time of year, uh, the big thing is rafting. And so we've got a lot of uh, rugged white water, particularly along the Clackamas, the Kalawash, the Roaring River. And uh, people are rafting this and they're uh, kayaking and so forth. And so this is a, kind of a big attraction. And uh, in a couple weeks here, we have the Upper Clackamas Whitewater Festival, which is uh, pretty uh, wild little festival where people uh, come down these ramps and do flips off kayaks and land into the white water and uh, it's kind of a fun thing to see. And uh, so, so that's one of the things that people come into the forest for. Uh, some of the other things are camping and uh, the interesting thing about it is that there's uh, over 700 campsites along here and uh, most of them are underutilized. Uh, according to the Forest Service, only about 25% utilization during the summer and fall, which is the primary camping period. Uh, so that's an uh, advantage that we really see. Uh, some of the other things that uh, people go into the National Forest to do are to, uh, to find mushrooms. And you actually can find uh, chanterelles and uh, Truffles and all of the mushrooms that uh, you find in some of the better restaurants. Um, it's also a great area for geocaching, and Estacada happens to be the uh, place where the first geocache was. And uh, and because the national forests are public lands, uh, there are great places for people to uh, put their little caches, and then. Uh, the thing is you try to find where they are. It's kind of a treasure hunt if you don't know what geocaches are. So, um, so kind of looking at these things. And then uh, in the fall season, there's huckleberries in uh, kind of the upper alpine areas. And so as well as fishing, uh, you know, a lot of little lakes, a lot of big reservoirs, uh, some of the larger reservoirs, there's crawdads and um, a lot of other, uh, all kinds of fishing, uh, salmon, steelhead, everything else. So, um, so anyway, what we're trying to do is kind of link all these other kind of things in with the cycling so that people uh, might come for a ride, but they'll also kind of learn about it and maybe they'll come back and do some of these other things. That's kind of the idea. Great, thanks. <laughs> okay, now we're crossing another line here. We are starting, at the ones, the last three that you'll hear from three people, four bikeways, are ones that have just put in an application. So if you could just touch on um, whatever you wanted to touch on um, about that, challenges, opportunities, and let's do Outback first. Where's Audrey? I lost you. Oh, there you are. Well, I'm Audrey Henry. I was the director for the Lake County Chamber of Commerce when I first heard about the Oregon Scenic Bikeways, and I was at the governor's conference. And I remember looking at the map saying, why is there nothing for Southern Oregon here? And so I think it was Kristen or somebody that was working at the table said, because you didn't apply for it. So I started the process last year. 
I did run into one problem with the um, county commissioners. I guess what they said to me, I thought it was a no-brainer, but what they said to me was, um, well, what happens if a car comes around the corner on that road that you're proposing and it hits one of the bicyclists? And I said, well, that road that I'm proposing, the bicyclists are allowed to be on that road anyway. And for two, that road has maybe four cars in a day pass on it, and they have hundreds of cattle getting moved all the time. So they're more likely to hit a herd of cows than they are to hit a bicyclist. So I think it's okay. So they're finally on board. Everybody's you know, excited about this. And um, I'm really excited about it because it's, there were so many different routes, I guess, that I could have picked in Lake County. I picked this one because it encompasses everything. It starts out going through the Fremont National Forest, then it goes up a national scenic backcountry byway. It goes through or alongside a wilderness study area, and then it goes into the high desert area. It goes down to all these lakes. It it's, uh, goes by uh, bird and basin trail. So there's birds galore, there's wetlands. So you're going through the forest, you're going up into the mountains, you go in um, the high desert area, and you go into the wetlands area. And in between, there's just so much to see. You'll, you'll probably see, if you ride this one, you'll probably see big horn sheep. The last time I drove it, there was about three dozen of them that crossed the road right in front of me. I had to stop the car and just wait for them to go by. You'll definitely see millions of antelope because it's right at the base of the um, National Antelope Refuge in Hart Mountain. Um, you could make a week trip out of it if you wanted to because there's different routes that you can go on this to um, see different areas and just keep on riding. We have um, Oregon's state gemstone is the sunstone and the only place you can find it is in our area up there in Lake County in Plush. It's called the Plush Diamond and right now they're starting to promote that. We've got a big um, organization that's coming down and they bought up a bunch of mines and they've got a bunch of mining claims and so they're going to start really promoting that is you know the Oregon state gemstone is the only place that you can find it. Um, it's just, you'll pass a, water, a waterfall. It's just absolutely gorgeous, breathtaking scenery and flowers galore, but, um, but you won't be able to get through it in the wintertime like some of the other places. It's, <laughs> we get some pretty rough winters. So I think that's it. I think it's a great economic development tool. I'm now the economic development specialist for Lake County, and so I continued on with my quest of promoting this and, and trying to continue to promote biking in Lake County. Yes? How long ride is it? It's almost 70 miles, 70 just under 70 miles. miles. But you could, like I said, you could make it a week-long trip if you go one direction. You could hit sunstones. There's petroglyphs out there. There's, there's like miles and miles of petroglyphs in this one area that have been dated over 12,000 years old. That's how, uh, and it's just you just walk along and there's a million of them. There's so much that's out there and it's pretty much undiscovered. So, like I said, if you ride it, you might see four cars in your whole trip. Yeah. What is your name again? Audrey. 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 Yes. Not paved roadway. Yes. Mm -hmm. But some of it's chip sealed. So. But um, it's in pretty good shape. It actually is not, not too bad. There's um, there's some really wide shoulders in some areas, and there's some kind of narrow shoulders in other areas. But the um, I think the fastest you can go is 45 when you're driving. So it's it's fairly safe, I think. And um, I have to say also, I had two guys come in from one was from British Columbia, one was from. Wisconsin last year when I first started um, at the chamber or two years ago and um, they were biking and they told me how far they had come and that they came to Lake County every single year and so I said why why do you come here tell me and then write it down <laughs> on the guest <laughs> register <laughs> what, what they told me was wide shoulders no traffic and gorgeous scenery so I said good I'm going to quote you and everything we do. <laughs> Okay, moving right along to try to get back on, on the agenda, but this is all really good information. So these are the ones that will be starting at the process, we haven't even rated them yet, um, is after Heidi. Well, first of all, you have to be able to spell it correctly. <laughs> which, That's one of my goals. That, that, which is, by the way, a challenge. Uh, in case you're interested, it's named after uh, the uh, poor supervisor for the Willamette National Forest. Evidently, people liked him, so they named the road after him. Well, I'm going to one-up a few of the communities. Everyone's been talking about how small their community is, right? We have no <laughs> You don't get any smaller than zero. Uh, how many of you have spent any time on the Mackenzie River? 
Okay, gorgeous area. We have historical lodges. It's been a destination for Oregonians and people for years. How many of you have ridden the Opter Heidi? Good. All of you say those hands, they can spell Opter Heidi. Check with them. Um, okay, basically the proposal is going from uh, what is called Rainbow, which is a sign, uh, all the way, and you start with a covered bridge, the Belknap White Covered Bridge. You end up in West Fur at the office covered bridge. So we go bridge to bridge, 60 miles. The route parallels, it goes along the McKenzie River, it goes along Cougar Reservoir, the South Fork of the McKenzie, tops over at the Box Canyon Guard Station. Oh, by the way, you have just dri ridden by a hot springs. Clothing, optional. Okay. Uh, you can drop off and then you go uh, parallel the middle fork. The route is already designated a scenic highway and a scenic waterway. So all we need is number three uh, as a scenic bikeway. It's a gorgeous ride. Even old guys like me can ride it. And uh, obviously I, I enjoy it. I live about three or four miles from where you can start the after Heidi, so it's my long ride. I will put in a plug for 242 though. That's also a spectacular ride. Well, they're gonna connect too, aren't they? Oh, and that's it. Yeah. I've already talked to a bunch of you. I'm really interested in Sisters, McKenzie, Oak Ridge, West Fur, and Cottage Grove connecting. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. connectivity is something I'm really excited about. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and the last one of the day, the last um, one that applied is Jenna with um, Cascade Siskiyou Mountain Loops and Reservoir to Rogue. And I think I spelled those both right. I'll check. <laughs> You do. Perfect. You didn't spell it rude. Yeah, exactly. Uh, honestly, my name is Dennis. Thank you. I work for Jackson County in uh, Southern Oregon. I'm the Bicycle Pedestrian Program Manager. And um, we have two routes in the hopper. One is the Res to Road, which is Emigrant Lake Reservoir to the Rogue River. So basically above Ashland, down all the way along um, from Bear Creek to the Rogue River and down to the town of Rogue River utilizing the Bear Creek Greenways and Rogue River Greenways when they're present. Um, and that's actually for the majority of that ride. There's multi-use trails, so you're off-road for most of that. And then the other one being from Ashland up the uh, Green Springs Highway and then across the plateau and back down Dead Indian and Wolf Memorial Road. Um, so those two, like I said, there's sort of a, a balancing issue where we have one that's only available in the summer months and Pretty hardcore, and the other one that we're hoping to get a lot more families out there and encourage you to make some family overnight trips. Um, our challenges were picking a route. Well, A, obviously our challenge was getting one in in the first place since we're now just applying and um, like going to Lakeview, same thing. Where's the, where's the Southern Oregon route? Um, because Southern Oregon does have some of the best biking. <coughs> in my humble opinion, the state. Um, <laughs> so I've heard yeah. that several times. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, the commercial with Klaus and the woman, right? I mean, yeah. Southern Oregon. Um, anyway, so our challenge was was uh, just getting together to put one in, and then also like you said, picking her out. Um, oh. And I, I thank you all for for sharing everything. And now we don't really have to learn from your for but I do just want to share just a little piece of motivation that I was thinking of about the whole engaging non-traditional partners, which is another one of our, our challenges. Jim Sayer, who's the director of Adventure Cycling um, at the National Bike Summit, mentioned that he was in this room of small town <coughs> Montana business owners. And so there's 50 of these business owners. This is right on the, the cross-country route. And he said, all right, how many of you ride a bike? And like three, five people. How many of you love cycling? Everybody raised their hand. And I think that's what, you know, is at the heart of these kind of groups and these kind of missions. Because you know what? You don't have to ride a bike, but you're going to love cycling. So <laughs> I think that's really a cool, cool uh, thing to know about.
in our mission is to get everybody out there riding. But our mission is to get everybody to love cycling and club cycling. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. And because of your applications, we're going to get to go out and ride them and rate them. There's lots of group folks. <laughs> The next thing on the agenda is this thing about signs. Um, I like to bring out the sign because if anyone remembers at the very beginning, the Willamette Valley Cemetery <coughs> signs were very, very little. And because of the good work at ODOT, not actually by somebody else who, who saw the need for a larger sign, this is now the size of the sign that goes on state roads and then there's a smaller sign for um, city and trail signs. Um, the, the purpose of this little part of the agenda is to talk about this great benefit of the signs for the cyclist and then what to do when you need a new sign. As we go through the process with each one being designated, the local proponent will work directly with the road jurisdictions to make sure the sign location tables, there's no questions, they're all ready to go and get their signs up, but then a sign goes down for whatever reason, or a year into it, you're getting a lot of feedback about this one intersection where you need to put in a new sign. And right now, um, with the nine scenic bikeways out, that is over 300 signs on the road, um, almost $40,000 in signs from state parks, part of that money is from state parks, part of that money is from a grant from Central Oregon. Yes, Mike? I just want to make sure Sheila gets the recognition for all that she's been to put and the Northwest, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. Northwest Also helped us, they need recognition too. They actually helping us with the new maps, the fund of the new maps, which is very exciting. Oh, you're right. They will, well, anyway. <laughs> so, yes. Hi, Alex. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little excited today. I got a couple of thoughts going on in my head. Anyway, so back to sign. So, with over 300 signs on the road, over $40,000 from Bicycle Rides Northwest, from Cycle Oregon, and the majority of that from state parks. Basically, it comes down to, you see how scattered I just got? If I'm in the middle of getting a new sign put up, or a replacement sign, and then I call and I, oh, can you put up that sign? And they're like, well, yeah, but do you want it before the rock or after the rock? And I've been to that intersection twice. It's, it's going to be a slow process. So we're changing things to hand them more over to you. And I'm going to talk about the city and county signs. You should all know in the bikeway plans that you've already written, it says who that contact person is. So when you go out and you see that there's a sign down, to call that contact person, say we need a sign, and then just follow it up with an email, CC me. I know that it's happening. This is for just replacement signs. And then it's, it can just happen quickly. I can order the sign, they can get it, they talk to the person who knows that intersection really well, get it, any questions answered. So all that contact stuff is in the bikeway plan already that you've already written. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Sheila. And the reason I mentioned the thing about not, um, she didn't actually, she was helpful with getting signs, but it was somebody else in ODOT is just to show how many people in ODOT are paying attention to the bikeways. Sheila has been on the committee from the very beginning. Actually, she was on the Benton County Bike Head Committee starting when? Oh yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and now she's the Bike Head Program Manager with ODOT. Yeah, I'm Sheila Lyons. I manage the Bike and Head Program at ODOT. And, um, you know, there's some key players that kind of started this idea of scenic bikeways, and they've kind of it, it, it was an idea that took a long, some time to get, gain some traction, and I, and I just think they would be just overwhelmed by the response now because, you know, just 10 years ago, it was an idea, it was this idea that we had a, a resource in Oregon that we could tap into, and now it's just quite amazing to see you all gathered here. You, some of you are, you've got bikeways already, other of you, uh, you are just getting the applications together, so it's really a phenomenon, I think, and... Um, and really gratifying, quite frankly, for me to see how successful this program has been. And, and, and no small thanks to Alex, who's come on board and, and, and kind of knew what the program needed and got to work on it. So um, the thing I'm going to focus on is signs, right? The easy part is picking the scenic route and getting all of the various um, 
groups and political supporters together and then you're going to face the signs and where to put them and how to get them and then someone in your group is going to say well we want to redesign the sign we think we have a better idea um don't do that you know <laughs> you, you, this has been um the signs of the the kind of the model of this sign was the oregon coast bike route which was designated in the mid-1980s and so the sign has gone through several iterations, and it's no small task to get a sign approved for use on the roads network, right? You can't just get out there and put your own sign up. You have to go through a process. And there's a statewide committee that uh, is made up of um, city, county, and ODOT officials and federal highway administration officials that determines what's allowable. And then there's a national group that determines what's possible and they produce this giant book called the manual on uniform traffic control devices and my advice is to steer clear of this <laughs> we've got the sign you might love it you might hate it but use it <laughs> so one of the challenges that you face as you decide you've got this bike way and and you'll notice that um yeah, we've got, we've got size options and the arrows um, integral to the sign so that you can't, so people can't go out there and muck with the bikeway by turning the arrow or, or anything like that. So um, there's a sign. And so you're going to, um, I'm trying to get down here. I didn't get it all. Oh, boy. I told you I minimized it. Yeah, sorry about that. No, that's all right. Um, I expected it to be minimized. I was looking just for the Google Maps thing that I have. Oh, look at this. Go to... Yeah, here, let me do that. It should be right there. Oh, no. No. I, I used that. I used Explorer. Oh, no. So anyway. Uh, which, um, what's the that's link? Fine. I'll bring it up. So the, the, one, of the, one of your first challenges is going to be out to figure out who owns what roadway oh, what's and the? what portion of what roadway. So just because it has a route number, there's Route 99W, 99E, 22, 20, 395. These are, you know, cross state, border to border roadways. And the question is, how do you, how do you, who do you contact? You have to have a letter of concurrence from all the road authorities in your application. And so how do you sort out who owns what? Well, if it's inside a city limit, right, whatever city it is, it's either uh, now George is going to tell me there's exceptions to every rule, but um, uh, if it's inside a city, it is either owned by the city itself or probably ODOT would be the two jurisdictions. And just because it's Route 22 through Salem does not mean that ODOT owns and maintains that. It can be the city. If it's outside a city limit, it's either going to be ODOT or the county that it's in. There are some forest service roads, BLM roads, there are probably even tribal roads. And so uh, you just need to start asking around. Uh, the starting place is the public works department of any county, any city, or the ODOT maintenance district, which is, um, and I did pull up the website to show you that there is a, a website for maintenance districts, but um, it's there's a lot of stuff on this desktop here, so um, that's fine. Uh, so that's your starting point. Contact the public works department at, you know, contact the public works department that you can find in the phone book and start asking questions, and they'll you'll they'll help you sort it out. Get a map, start penciling it out, figure out who owns what. Sometimes ownership and maintenance agreements are are different, but there's three levels of government. You're going to have. Uh, city, county, and then the state, which is when you're trying to interact with ODOT, at, we ask that you get a concurrence in the application from the ODOT Maintenance District Office. Is that it? I, I, I think I'll I just take questions at this point. If some of you have been through this process and know, um, some don't. You're, you're going to need to find specific locations where they need to mount the signs. They might want to try and use an existing signpost that may or may not serve the bikeway well. These are just all the details that you're going to have to negotiate as you go through it. Yeah. I'm sure we'll have lots of discussions of our community, but um, we just took the event journalist, journalist or right around, and um, noticed that some routes have bob 
water stretches without sort of like a confirmation sign. And I was wondering if we're standardizing that or just letting each component look at their own Well, current, there's a lot of, you know, signs. Um, signs are, you know, they're, they cost money to in, uh, install, they cost money to maintain. There's a, a definite uh, attempt to limit the number of signs because sign clutter would be very easy. You know, everybody, you know, 99% of the problems out there, what's the first solution that's proposed? A sign, right? A sign or a traffic signal, right? Do these things really work? So that's, we're in the, we're in the business of resisting those suggestions. And so confirmation signs, we don't have a standard for it. Um, on the Coast Bike Route, which is the one that um, ODOT maintains and has been around for the longest, um, we have actually um, relatively few uh, confirmation signs. So we try and locate them at decision points. One of the challenges with putting signs up for cyclists is if the going gets rough, you've got your head down, right? And you might ride on past the sign. We have a number of locations on the Coast Bike Route where it's the signs on an uphill segment, and those get missed a lot because people are got their head down and they're working hard, and they're missing the turn. So, I don't know what the recipe is. If you really have problems, people are really uneasy that they're not on the route. You know, you can work with your local road authority to get another sign placed, but you do have to be sensitive to the fact that you're one group, and there's probably a thousand more out there that have an idea for a sign on the roadway. So. Um, we, uh, we have to be uh, sensitive to that, yeah. Yeah. All that stuff. It's, it's, yeah. it's, and, 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 and um, we do have a maintenance agreement. Uh, we have signed an agreement between ODOT maintenance uh, offices or, and Oregon Parks and Recreation, which agrees that ODOT will install and uh, replace signs um, on uh, the uh, ODOT right-of-way. It's not cost-free. ODOT isn't going to do that for zero money. But, um, but most sign crews are, are pretty good about it. They'll get your signs out there. If, especially if you put the money up, then they've got a contract and they'll, they'll get out there and it won't be as they have time. It'll be on their work list yet. Hello, I'm Carolyn McCormick and we're getting ready, hopefully, yeah. to Yeah. And I have a, a very important question about science. We are probably the city of precedent uh, in this group, and we're going to actually pay for all the science. Thank you for mentioning that. That's what I should have said. They are the component group is paying for the signs. Yes. So, as we prepare, and I'd like to see the signs get up, would you give me an idea? And you're the gal I know I need to talk to later on. Can you give me an idea of what it costs per sign? And how long it will take to have a sign themselves Well, Parks supplies the signs, right? And, talk on the price of the and um, <laughs> it, you know, you're probably in the order of, you know, 700 bucks to $1,200 no, per installation. What I'm finding, I don't know about ODOT because <laughs> there's a secret about ODOT right now. I don't know if I'm supposed to say anything but oh. about that. <laughs> but right, um, a lot of the signs were handled directly by Sheila for ODOT. But for all the other signs, all the counties, um, before they go in, this, they start the, the project, they have to give me a, a guesstimate of cost per sign to install. This is the work to install the post, the hardware, but not the actual sign. I've gotten anywhere from $100 to $250. The top, the most expensive county is Deschutes. Yeah. yeah, but most of the counties are coming in at two, 125 to, to 150 per sign, and then state parks orders the signs, and the signs cost about $64 each. I mean, that's a huge bargain. That, that you know, if I were estimating for a construction project, I'd I'd be you know between five and twelve hundred dollars per sign. Do you have a sense because you done this? A lot of you have done this. Of course, nine of you. Um, what's the time frame between ordering the sign, and I know you've got all the bureaucracy getting installed, but actually ordering the sign and having that physical sign in the hand? Are there 
like two week time? I think I can I answer that too because I think all the bike ways are gonna say it was slow because Alex didn't get on it right away. <laughs> because we had how many bike ways designated in one fell swoop? And that was a lot of intergovernmental agreements, a lot of phone calls, and that's why it's so wonderful that you're stepping in where it's really directly from the Washington County Visitors Association to the road jurisdiction. And it takes about two weeks from ordering the signs to when they arrive at the road jurisdiction. And then it's up to the road jurisdiction. So if they know it's coming, they can hopefully schedule for that and have all, as I said, in the sign location table, all those questions answered and go up much more quickly. And Alex, one, it's not just going up to the post and the line, but the uh, locates so uh, I, oops, uh, the uh, active transportation, the bicycle and pedestrian program. No doubt, no doubt, and uh, yes, uh, Doug, and then uh, the gentleman. Back. I just want Alex to mention how much the city of Kaiser is charging the program oh. for uh, for the installation of signs. Okay, I stand corrected. The cheapest. <laughs> Sign <laughs> installation is zero from Kaiser. Kaiser is not charging us. No, I, just, I almost want to follow up. Just kind of one thing. I, I, I'm an advocate for, if possible, have a cyclist go out with the road department to locate the signs and think about what the bicyclist is going to be doing at that intersection when you think about where you're going to put in the sign. And just as an example, if you've got a road, where the bicyclist is riding along at 15 or 20 miles an hour and has to make a left turn onto an obscure little ride, road. You want that sign back from the intersection rather than right at the intersection so the cyclist is already past it when they see it. So the, the Kaiser Public Works people were really great uh, in, in terms of lo relocating the Willamette Valley City Pikeway. Uh, they, gave, they gave me time to go out with them. We went to each intersection uh, there were only two actually, frankly, uh, and, and talk about where a strategic place would be to put the sign. And I guess I'm a real advocate of, uh, of, of if, if that's possible, they're really willing to give us that time uh, to go out there with them and talk about what the bicyclist is going to be doing as they approach that intersection and think about the location in conjunction with that. Yeah. And gentlemen back here? Uh, the, uh, the two things, the, the sign invested at a parallel at the region. Just points left. I can do that if I get points up and to the left See, I said someone would want to redesign the sign. <laughs> 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 um, do you want to check that? Um, well, I was, it's probably this topic? Oh, yes. Okay. And I someone had an issue. Oh, I'm sorry. I have one more question. Are we required I don't think you need to worry about that because Parks has the signs manufactured and supplies them. So except for for twelve no, like, they'll be ordering exactly the same signs out. So they'll all match. So all the bike signs. Like the same. And those signs would fall in the federal requirements. So to, to, I'm going to wrap up this little section unless there's any more comments about signs. Yes, yes, yes. Does Bruce use the other signs? Yeah. I think they must be uh, tied into the MUTCD. They, they, they can choose to be, and they, they gave us two different answers recently. But usually, the answer is usually yes. <laughs> you don't want another rest. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what do you want to call me for? <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I just have a sign question, okay, email address. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll, I'll give you my card. Thank you. <laughs> call the district office. <laughs> and I think what she just said, that's a good place to end it because yeah. what we're trying to do is make things speed up to give you more power to replace the signs there. as needed. Yeah. So when you're calling the city or the county and you just send that follow-up email, thanks for installing the sign, Alex will be ordering it, CC me, this is for any replacement signs, so we can get that ball rolling. And um, if we want to look at new signs or redesigning things, that's where I need to step in a little bit more. But for just replacement signs, and the same thing with the ODOT, to contact the ODOT person directly 
and that's all in your right grade plan. Um, I'm going to move. Don't redesign the sign. Lo love the sign you got. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. A lot of work went into that. <laughs> and I'm going to move ahead to the next thing on the agenda, if that's okay with everybody, um, to um, Robin Phillips, who's also with ODOT. And the whole reason for this being on the agenda is at the, when we were at the you know, Grand for the Grand Tour workshop on the bikeway. Robin started talking to me about transit connecting to bikeways in Eastern Oregon. And I thought, we need to talk about this now. So, here she is. Now okay. watch where you put, oh, I, oh, I, what I don't know where do? you, I just, I just pulled this up so I can go, I, I want to go to the, um, Is it in the folder? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll put it up as you're talking. I'll get it. Did you get it? 